Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Ceftech. How are you guys doing today? How's life? I just realized that in this mod pack we have so many things to do and I don't know where to start. But I think we're going to start by going to the moon and find some cheese. Also we're going to need to find some meteors and I think we should make a frequency module. But that requires a wafer which requires a circuit fabricator. Here is our circuit fabricator and here is our wafer. With the frequency module we should be able to hear sounds in space which is very useful to find meteors. Also I have noticed that we have access to heavy oxygen tanks and let us see if we can make a few. These are going to hold 2700 units of oxygen and the ones we have only hold 900. So these are triple efficient. After we are back from the moon we want to try and make this ultimate crafting table and we need a lot of black iron so let us start making some because it's going to take a very long time. Okay we are back at the moon and I did bring our digital miner so we should be able to find cheese relatively easy. That is not cheese. That's copper. That is a meteoric iron. Very good. But first things first let us find some cheese. I think this should be the ore dictionary right? Yes. Find me some. So if you harvest a meteor it will give you two, we can double it. But that's not very good because I think we need a lot. And mystical agriculture is far far away so we need to do this manually. And since gravity is terrible here, I did bring a magnet. I was just thinking what if a meteor hits our astral gateway. So maybe we should do it here where it's safe. I would say this is a decent amount of cheese to get us started. So we can go back home. I found some more meteors. If we smell cheese, we will only get one. But if we fortune it, we might get up to three. So why did we need cheese? Cheese is very important because if we use the ore and infuse it with compressed obsidian, we will get skystone, which is used in making applied energistics controller. So let's do that before I forget. We can also eat it, but it also has other uses, mainly for teleportation. And you did not have to use the ore. You could have used the cheese. But the main use of having cheese is that if we put it in a smeltery and melt it down, we would be able to make different blueprints for different rockets. And therefore we do not need to find dungeons on the moon or other planets. At least I hope. And the meteoric iron is to make the heavy duty plates. I just came to the nether so that we would be able to find cobalt and aridite. Why did you get low grade charcoal? I think you're not going to harvest cobalt and aridite. <laughs> okay, it's fine, I can harvest some on my own. So why did I need cobalt and aridite? The thing is, I want to start making the ultimate crafting table and in order to make the elite crafting table, which we need two of them in order to make the ultimate version, we're going to need blocks of manulin. Also since the crafting tables are extremely expensive, let us do this one by one. We first make the elite crafting table, then we do the upgrade. I think we need four of the basic version, then we're going to need two advanced, and I think we should be able to make one elite. Yes. And that one is an advancement. Of course this was super expensive but we need two more of these. Alright guys, it's been maybe one hour later and I have been grinding down like crazy because we cannot use the digital miner in order to get cobalt and aridite and I had to dig everything manually. But thankfully we had some cobalt and aridite left in these crates when I was moving the ore miners so I think we should be good. I could only make one elite crafting table and for the second one I'm having a little bit of a problem. We need eight more manulin ingots. But I think what we're going to do is that we're going to take this one, we're going to upgrade it to ultimate crafting table, which should unlock a few stuff, but there is a creative age. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, it's not unlocking a new age. These recipes should be unlocked. And this is a recipe for a creative tank. It's not the best. So whenever we get enough ardite and cobalt from the ore miners, I can make the elite crafting table as well. I was thinking that, oh, I'm going to make a nanobot beacon and I'm going to make a creative flight modifier. Unfortunately, this is the recipe, so it's not gonna happen. Well, we had to make the ultimate crafting table to see what kind of creative items we have to make and how to prepare for them. So it's not that we're going to focus on any of them right now. Alright guys, I have finally decided that we are going to start the foundations of Lassa 2. And I have also added my favorite mod in the game, Architecture Blocks, so that we will get these. In this area, I want to use a lot of Galactic Craft gizmos and I thought we should start by making a door. There is an airlock from Galactic Craft and I think we should be able to make it. So this is basically like a nether portal where you have to make a frame and then you need to add a controller somewhere. And there you go, you have an airlock. And in the controller we can specify that open the door whenever the player is within 2 meters. So if I come here, it will open and it will close. I can set it to 5 meters but whenever we're inside, the door will be open. So 2 meters is fine I guess. And we can just put the controller down here so that it's hidden. I think one more very important thing that we can add 
is the communication dish, but that is going to require some advanced wafers and we need to craft them. Of course, you should remember that this block has no uses, but I think we should be able to just place it down, right? Can we put it over there? Yes, it looks cool and it's huge. I like it. There are two modular machineries that we have to install in here. One of them is going to be the scamulator and the other one, the hydraulic press. The hydraulic press is not a priority right now, but the scamulator is because we want to go to Mars and we need the blueprint. I thought I made some sky stone, but I can't find it anywhere. It's fine. We can make more. And if I'm not wrong, this should be the multi-block structure for the scamulator. And you do not have a blueprint. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, it doesn't have a blueprint. Interesting. For the scamulator to work, we are going to need some melted cheese. And I think we can just put a tank under here and fill it in. Yes, that is cheese. Let's give it a small test and see if we can make the tier 2 rocket. So this is cheese. We need a map and a wafer. Do you work? Yes, 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 it does. And we have the blueprint. It's not called blueprint. It's a schematic. So our NASA workbench should be somewhere in the center. Oh, I have to take that higher. Okay. Or maybe you go lower. Yes, much better. We unlock the schematic and we should be able to make the tier 2 rocket. Oh, this one is relatively expensive. We need a lot of heavy duty plates. We don't need our tier 1 rocket anymore and we should be able to recycle it. There is a block called the Deconstructor from Galacticraft. And if we put you in, you're gonna tear it apart and give me a bunch of goodies, I guess. Four heavy duty plates. Okay. I was expecting more. I tell you what, it is going to take a fair bit of time until I can get all the parts we need in order to make the rocket, so let us focus on teleportation. Cause now we have access to RF tools and we should be able to teleport much easier. It's just that this recipe is a pain, compressed dish. Okay, so uh, we have to go to Mars. Honestly speaking, I had no idea that they want us to go to Mars before we can teleport ourselves, but it's okay. We can go with a celestial gateway. As usual, we're going to need a nose cone. We also need to get some fuel canisters and thankfully we can just fill it in here at our refinery. And the canisters are used in making the booster. And if I'm not wrong, we have everything to make the tier 2 rocket. Very good. I originally wanted to go to Mars before we can finish the base, but it's okay. Now that we need teleportation, it works in our favor. We are going to go to Mars and we're going to get Dash. And I think I have everything I'm going to need. The digital miner seems to be working with the galactic craft ores, so we're going to take it and we're going to have a celestial gateway. See you on Mars. I mean, at least I'm hoping this one goes to Mars. Do you? Yes. Go to Mars. That's not very safe don't drop me in the hole please 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 thank you high environmental pressure okay that's not very good now that there's high environmental pressure i'm actually scared uh, we have to do this really fast and also invalid thermal protection very good <laughs> yes we can go home whenever we need to i had no idea that i have to make another spacesuit but it's okay let us make it i can't really do that it needs titanium how do you get titanium? According to the wiki, titanium can be obtained from asteroids. We don't have access to them, so we're gonna go back to Mars. We have found almost 1000 dish ore. Very good. What do you do? Unnamed. I don't really want to do a lot of exploration on Mars because I'm scared I will die. It is perfectly fine because I think we have plenty of dish, so let us process it and progress further. First things first, I just realized that I have made a huge boo-boo. The thermal problem that we had on Mars is because I was not wearing a thermal padding. This is from the add-on from Galactic Craft and I completely forgot about this. We should be able to make it easily because it's basically wool and redstone and we have plenty of wool. So next time that we go to Mars, we should not have any problems. I'm so pretty. With that out of the way, I think now we should start focusing on a transportation hub. The recipe for the matter transmitter and the matter receiver has been changed. Also the recipe for the machine frame from RF tools. It's going to require invar rods and gray plastic. And we have plenty of invar. I'm not very sure on the plastic. Okay, we can have one stack. I haven't even finished this building, but we need to start expanding it. I think we are going to have our teleportation hub over here. Also, I'm not exactly sure how many destinations we're going to have in this game, but I'm assuming having 16 of them is going to be a safe bet, right? And I do understand this is only three matter transmitters, but the thing is, they're expensive. So for the start, we're just gonna have three. We should probably also have an airlock over here just to make it look cool. And having the controller in the center is actually very convenient because if you put it at the side and you approach it from this side, 
it will not open it. And unfortunately on this side we cannot have any windows. This is going to be such an expensive project because already we are very short on iron. Here's the plan. The way that this is going to work is that we are going to have one matter receiver which is going to work for all of our destinations and all the dimensions. Meaning that wherever I go when I want to come back I will be teleported here. Then we are going to have a charged porter and I hope we can upgrade it, yes. If we hold shift and right click on U we should be able to teleport back using the porter. Yes, it's not fully charged up, but it should work fine. And just for testing purposes, we are going to set one up in not the nether, the end. How do I go to the end? Yes, yes, we have a gateway. I have a quantum entangle porter, we have a matter receiver, and we're going to call this one the end. So now the question is, if I put a dialing device over here and ask this guy to dial the end, this is called the end. The one in the end is also called the end. If I ask him to dial the end, will I be able to go? Yes. And we have spawned in the end. Very good. And the reason that I had to test it is that can I remove the dialing device? Oh yes I can. Very good. And this should continuously work. If it was not clear enough, my idea is that we're going to have a transmitter for every dimension that we're going to have. And then when we want to get back, we just use the charge porter. And of course we're going to have the exact same setup on the moon. The thing is on the moon there is a risk of meteors and I was thinking maybe we just do it in a cave. So again we're going to have a quantum entangler porter, one matter receiver, and we're going to call it the moon. And now that we have a matter transmitter on the moon, we can link them up. Moon to moon. Very good. I'm happy with this. We are also going to have the same setup on Mars. Oh, this requires a shovel. I did not know that. And I just wanted to remind you that the entire reason that we're making it inside the cave is to protect ourselves from meteors. So let us do a very small recap. That is the end. Moon. Mars. And for the moment we don't really have any other destinations, so this will have to do. This is going to be the rough shape of our galactic craft area, and for the moment I'm actually happy with it. Later on we might have to add a tower over here so that it looks more decent. And of course this is not something that we can finish today because we have other projects to do as well. And what I wanted to do for today was to just get a rough shape going on so that we know what we should do next episode. But just before we leave this area there is one more thing that I want to try. I really need a bed over here. Yeah, I think right now it looks more decent. Okay, let us focus on the rocket. Oh, and by the way, I did discover that there is something called Arc Lamp and it's from Galactic Craft. It is like the floodlights from Immersive Engineering, but in one block. And it doesn't need power. I always knew that there is a solar panel from Galactic Craft, but I went to the wiki and the pictures looked amazing. Because it's not just one block, when you place it down, it looks like this. So I was hoping that we can at least power some stuff using this guy. The question is, can we make four? They really look nice and they even adjust themselves based on the position of the sun. Since we have four of them, let's see how much RF they're generating. Uh-huh. I have no idea how much that is. Yeah, I thought making an energy cell will help, but uh, I still don't know how much RF per tick that is. Which is perfectly fine by me because the only thing that I wanted to power is the fuel loader. Oh, and by the way, I'm not going to use universal cables like this in order to power the fuel loader. I wanted to use the energy beam receiver and the reflector in order to power it, which is from Galactic Craft. But the problem is this guy is going to require titanium which is not something that we have. So this is going to be a temporary setup until we get to the asteroids and get titanium. And I think what we should do is that we're going to hook up our refinery into an ender tank and we just put the other tank over here and some mechanical pipes, which doesn't connect. Does it have to be done manually? Okay, it's fine. We just need one bucket per flight and I can do that manually. Anyhow, I was thinking, should we get the Oromatic 5000 or not? And then I noticed that in the Mark II, we're going to need a bunch of stuff from Abyssal Craft. One of them is the Crystallizer and the other one is the Materializer. Again, I'm not sure if I want to make the Mark II, but I was thinking maybe we should be prepared if we need to. Of course, that means that we have to progress a bit further into Abyssal Craft. Just a bit more. We need to start upgrading our Necronomicon and for that we're going to need a Staff of Rending. After I noticed that environmental tech is in the pack, I was thinking that maybe we can have the boss fights from Abyssal Craft after we get a Nanobot Beacon. So that we can get different modifiers and different buffs. But the problem is, <laughs> we're not getting that much Erodium. This has been running for the past 10 hours and we only have 31. We need 54 for the lens. So I guess there's no point of wasting time, that is the wrong portal. Let's go to the Abyssal Wastelands. So for those of you who don't know, we currently have the Necronomicon and we need to upgrade it to Abyssal Wasteland Necronomicon. And for doing that, we need the skin of the Abyssal Wasteland and to get that, 
we need the Abyssal Wasteland Essence. And this is why we need the Staff of Rending, so that we can gather Essence from mobs. And you just hold right click until the number reaches 100. It's 81. 99 and 100 we got one i need to gather seven more it's been a while and so far we only have three okay we have what we need and we should be able to make eight skins of the abyssal wasteland and then we just upgrade our necronomicon which has 5000 pe and it will lose all of that very good <laughs> our next order of business is to try and find the dreadland infused power stone it's in a fortress and in order to find it we're going to need the power stone tracker it's nothing super complex we just need to upgrade some eyes of the ender with corallium pearl not the pearl the gem and there is something else that i want to try so it is in a fortress but it is surrounded by these stone brick fences and i want to see if it's possible to locate it with our scanner technically we are not going to locate it with the scanner we're just going to pinpoint its location oh it's that way okay just by any chance is there any loot here no there is loot under here nice we're gonna go loot this one and it's going to give us a chaos catalyst it gave me an oblivion catalyst that's really good. Now I have to check each and every one of them because that Oblivion Catalyst is quite expensive. I should not have dropped it over Corallium. I think we should be fairly close. Can I locate it with the scanner? No. Yeah, maybe we weren't that close. Yeah, it's exactly down here. You can see it with the scanner. So we dig down and then we try to find the fences. Ladies and gentlemen, we're in. Oh, these are also not empty interesting okay we did not need to use the scanner we can just use the journey map it's over here we get rid of you and i don't think we can harvest it using our pick what kind of options do we have from abyssal craft we have the refined corallium pick is this something that we can make yes and we should be able to harvest it uh-huh uh-huh i'm nervous yes because if you have the wrong pick it might break oh another one that was almost 2000 blocks away to make the next gateway key we are going to need a transmutation gem which we already have we needed the power stone which we got it but we also need the eye of the abyss i just remembered that this has to be a brand new transmutation gem so we have to craft another one the one that we have at our base is already used they don't leave you alone for even 30 seconds it's okay and just in case i'm going to make two of them i think we have everything we just need one bucket of corallium and we should be able to activate it do i have my bow yes i have my bow but we need arrows we are not doing a lot of damage and i'm so happy that he's stuck he literally flew away it's going to be a very painful fight because i cannot fly i mean i can fly but i cannot shoot while i'm flying he's almost dead almost don't run away one more hit yes sure 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 just drop the thing <gasps> don't drop it there uh we have a magnet maybe it helps yes we have it okay very good i used to think that corallium is like lava and it will destroy everything luckily it does not we have everything we are going to need in order to make the dreaded gateway key except the pe oh and by the way this guy did not lose the entire pe it has 3400 left because we used some of that but we need to let it charge and that's going to take a while hello so there is a singularity for dead compass and i'm guessing we have to farm it from them just before we continue with abyssal craft there is something i would like to mention regarding your guys's comments on the previous episode some of you guys were suggesting that instead of focusing on the advanced generator that we have over here i should invest in a gas burning generator from mechanism and start burning ethylene it's actually a very good idea because two of those should be equivalent to our advanced generator which is generating us 9000 rf per tick but the main issue that i have is lack of resources this guy only requires manulin in order to be upgraded and manulin is something that we can spare because we don't need it for anything else and if i want to get into gas burning generators i'm going to require a lot of iron and that's not something that i can spare and yes i do understand that i wasted a lot but you know this is 9728 very good i don't remember how did we get the statues oh it's just a decorative statue which is easy to make and we just upgrade it oh so can i make three more yes so that in the future this will work faster and this is 10,000. very good our transmutation gem was not consumed but i'm not gonna risk it we're going to use a brand new one i think we have everything and it does not say that it's going to require a sacrifice so we just activate it and you are the sacrifice and we have the gateway key and i think logic dictates that we just put the next portal over here here yes i don't like that yeah we just put it over here good welcome to the dreadlands 
where it's extremely dark. I honestly don't mind being able to make radium ingots and I don't remember how we should make them. We need you in a transmutator, okay. Who drops it? Okay, he's doing a lot of damage. Yes, the big guys drop it. Very good. These guys set you on fire, they make a lot of noise, but they're not that difficult. As long as I'm saturated. I was checking to see if there is another recipe to get radium, but unfortunately, it's not. So I have to farm the guards until we have enough. I just came back to the overworld to repair my sword, and I did discover something very interesting. The tool rod that we're using for our sword is wood. If I switch it with manulin, the durability will go lower and the attack stays the same. But I noticed that if I use Abyssal Knight, it will do 25% increased damage to mobs from Abyssal Craft. Also, I think we are going to get the Samurai Armor today because we had 63 of these and that's 63 ingots. And in the Samurai Armor, the boots does not have any plating. We need two for the leggings, four for the chest plate and two for the helmet. And that's the expensive part. With the upgrade, I think it's a far better sword, but guards are rare. I take it back. I found a pack and that rhymed. I found another pack. It's five of them. <laughs> nice. I think after this guy, we just go home. We have 44. As usual, we need to make the base armor and then let's see how much we can upgrade it. We also need a lot of this dread cloth and we're out of ingots. Okay, I can make the chest plate. This will give us eight protection. This one was giving us nine. Okay, so that was better. I'm extremely confused. I used to think that the samurai chest plate is better. It looks cooler. I went up ahead and made the other parts of the armor and I even had to go back to the dreadlands because for the boots, you're going to need planks. And I forgot about that. In terms of protection, it's actually not as good as the previous armor that we had, but the only difference is it's going to give us fire resistance too, which I'm guessing it's actually very useful for dreadlands because everything wants to set you on fire. And I don't think it will give us water breathing, does it? No. All that being said, I don't regret my decision because I think it looks cool. And during that entire time, we only got three pieces of erodium. That's it. I think our plan for the next episode, until we manage to get that stupid lens, is to try and progress a little bit further into Galactic Craft and also do a little bit more progression in the Between Lands. Because there are so many backed up advancements that I think one day they are going to bite us in the face. Anyway guys, I think it's also a good time to wrap up the episode. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one. Bye bye. Um, hi. I was reading your guys' comments on the previous episode and then I thought maybe I should do a very small explanation. There was a bit of concern regarding or doubling, tripling and quadrupling with mechanism and I think in this mod pack that has been disabled for most of the ores and we have to make the oromatic. Cause for instance if you search for clumps which is ore tripling, it will show you that it will only accept clusters for osmium, gold, copper, and so on and so forth. It does not do it for titanium, it does not do it for nickel, and it does not do it for anything from Galacticraft. So if we want to quadruple ores, we have to make the oromatic. There is no other way. Oh, and by the way, I did mention the gas burning generator, and it seems it's not in the pack. None of the mechanism generators are in the pack. Also, the reactor is not in the pack. I knew that. We're screwed. Bye-bye.